<sighs> G'day, how you going? Uh, double effort here. Now a lot of people have asked and have wondered how I illustrated this book, uh, Bindi. Uh, let's have a look. Now for these, these illustrations, uh, they're all in black and white because in the story of Bindi, there's a, a bushfire is looming in the background. So I, I intentionally used um, lead and also um, a charcoal pencil to, um, to reflect what's been happening in the, in the landscape in, in the story of Bindi. can see here this is a water soluble lead it's just like watercolor but lead so I just dab a little bit of water in there um, I just dab my paintbrush and some water and then just uh, put it on the page willy-nilly I usually use a lot of reference whether it's photos um, from the internet or from uh, my own um, photo albums or uh, magazines um, as well as objects. I have lots of objects in my studio and I happen to pick up this little Banksia, Banksia pod. It's drawings like this one that really helped me decide how the illustrations were going to look in Bindi. Now, once you've done that, you just sort of put on the basic shapes. Uh, you can go back in with water or you can go back in with a rubber. Now, I'm not too worried about it looking exactly like the object that I'm drawing. I just wanted to have a good representation. And, uh, and using the lead and the charcoal, um, you know, gives all the illustrations a, a faded look, a burnt look. So there you go. That's how I did the illustrations for Bindi. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Okay, see ya. Hi, I'm kids book author Liz Ledden and welcome to Story Scoop. A huge thank you to CBCA and Squibby for this fun video series. Today, I'm here to talk to you about my new picture book, Walking Your Human. It's illustrated by Gabriella Petruso and it's published by Larrikin House. And also I'm here to give you three writing tips on how you can improve your own stories. This story was inspired by my very own dog, Frankie. Frankie is a silky terrier crossed with not really sure what, it's a bit of a mystery. And the reason it's a mystery is because we adopted Frankie from a rescue center. The day we went to look at the dogs there, we could take the dogs for a walk just to see how we got along. First, we walked a little white fluffy dog that was very cute and quite perfect really. We walked along, nothing memorable happened. It was just a typical walk with a dog. Then we walked Frankie and she kind of leaned sideways as she walked. She pulled on the leash. She dragged us down the road and essentially she took our family for a walk, not the other way around. But there was something really lovable about this dog who wasn't quite doing all the right things. And this had us very intrigued. And basically this ended up being the dog that we took home, which brings me to writing tip one. If you're writing your own stories and coming up with character ideas, have a think about what your character is like. If they're really ordinary and they also do everything perfectly or they do everything the right way, is that interesting? Think about what your character could do differently or unexpectedly, or even just a little bit wrong. This is what makes a character interesting. So maybe give them a few flaws. Walking Your Human sounds like it's written by me, but really it's a dog telling the story. Actually, a whole cast of dogs, and they are sure they've got it all figured out about what humans want to do on a walk. 
My second writing tip is to think about your narrator. That is, who is telling your story? In Walking Your Human, I could have written it from the human's point of view. So if the human was talking all about their walk with the dog, maybe they'd just be complaining about all the annoying and frustrating things that their dog did. But this way, I have the dog telling the story. So everything we hear is from the dog's point of view. This way, it's a little bit more, I guess, funny having the dog telling the story and we get a little bit of a peek into what they could be thinking. So next time you're writing a story, think about who is telling your story. Think if you could actually flip it or reverse it and think if this would actually add some humor to your own story. In Walking Your Human, the pictures add a whole lot of extra meaning to the words. Let's take a look at a few examples. On this page, we say, don't forget to stop for a drink. But can you see that the dog is pulling the human into the duck pond? Is that stopping for a drink? Do you think that's what the human thinks they're doing? I don't know about that. And another example is this page. It says, sometimes your human will need protecting. Do you think they need protecting from pigeons? The dog thinks they do. And it says here, they'll always be grateful. What do you think? Would you be grateful if your dog scared away a pack of pigeons because they were so scary? When you're writing or illustrating your own stories, think about the words and the pictures and the way they can work together. And think about if someone says one thing, but actually might really mean another. And you can show this in the pictures. Thank you so much for listening to my talk all about walking your human. And when it comes to creating your own stories and your own characters, I hope it's given you a few ideas about how you can make your characters a bit more interesting and how you can think about point of view and who is actually telling your story. Thank you so much, Story Scoop, for having me. Bye. Hi kids, I'm Dr. Gina Newton and I'm the author of Combat Wombat to the Rescue. And my name is Tiffany Daly. I am the illustrator for Combat Wombat to the Rescue. And today, Gina and I are going to share with you how we work together to create this wonderful picture book. And I'd like to start just by asking Gina where she came up with the idea for Combat Wombat. Well, that's interesting, Tiff. I actually wrote another book once called Blossom Possum, The Sky's Falling Down Under. And I was talking to a school group one day and asking them to come up with different rhyming names for animals. And one little boy suggested Combat Wombat. And I thought, what a great idea. I'll write a book about that one day. And I did. Oh, that is a great idea. And from all of the initial conversations we had about Combat Wombat, it seemed to me that you really wanted to portray in him a sense of leadership and heroism. That's right. I really did want Combat Wombat to be a leader and a hero because wombats are very intelligent animals, very strong, very intelligent, and have lots of special skills and talents. Mm. And I wanted Combat Wombat in particular to have a war cry. Womba Romba, wildlife warrior of the bush. Mm. <laughs> and... Um, some of his other talents include having a very sensitive sense of smell mm. and a big behind. Yes. I do remember very early you used to tell me all the things that you wanted and, and uh, for Combat Womba in particular, he had this certain image that you wanted to convey of him being this old war-torn hero, yeah. uh, but still being cute and fluffy, and he certainly is. Uh, what I would like to ask you about Combat Wombat is, um, in particular, the role of his friends and, and what, what part they play. Yeah, well, um, even though he's a hero, sometimes it's pretty hard because obstacles get in your way. Yeah. And when they do, it's really good to have your friends around you and to act as a team and cooperate together. And so he had some very special friends. He does. And two of them were Rocky Cocky, who's able to fly surveillance and raise the alarm to everybody, 
And then there was also Toey Joey, who has a pouch and she's able to collect rations so that they're well prepared for their journey. Yep. And also there was Joanna Goanna, who knows first aid and her job is to help all the other animals if they get hurt. Yep. And lastly, it was Echo Gecko, who is the smallest member of the group, but very important because his job is to make sure everybody stays calm. And that is a little bit difficult to do in a situation where you might be panicking. That's true. Um, and one of the things that was great about working with Tiffany is that she was able to bring all these characters to life just from a name. So how did you do that, Tiffany? Oh, there's a lot to be said about a name. Uh, I took all of the names that you had for all of these characters and I researched what type of animal they were and what colours their fur was and, you know, how many what their paws looked like and how many nails they might have and I was able to create them based off of those reference images. Yeah, well you did, really did a great job researching them because they all look very true to life but you also were able to give them character and personality mm -hmm. and emotion and how did you do that? Well. How I did that was through body language and facial expressions because when we're happy we generally have big smiles and our cheeks go up a little bit higher and when we're sad you know maybe our, our eyes kind of look a little bit down and our eyebrows they kind of droop in the middle and, and sometimes there's a lot of different ways that we can convey what we're feeling just from our body language and so to, to convey what they're feeling I was able to use eyebrows and big eyes and lots of, you know, little detail in the faces and, and their smiles and even maybe the shape of their nose to... Yeah, to and I think two really good examples of that that I can think of straight up are the scene where they're all fleeing from the fire and they're following Combat Wombat mm. and you can really see the look of determination on his face and you can see the fear in their eyes behind behind him. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is when Combat Wombat himself is looking a bit dejected and, and feeling like he can't do something. He, he thinks he can't swim. Mm -hmm. But you captured that really well with the emotion that you put into your illustrations. Well, thank you. Really yeah. great talking to you kids. And Tiff and I had so much fun writing and illustrating Combat Wombat together. And we just want to sign off now and say, Wamba Rumba!